Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I'm gonna to be bringing you my opinion on the top 10 greatest budget knives of all time, now in 2022. How do you define budget knife, Metal Complex? On this channel, it's anything under $75. There are an absolute crap load of amazing knives that could easily qualify. At some point, I will make a top 50 of all time and include all of those, but don't be surprised if some of your favorites are left off of this list. Once again, this is just my opinion and you obviously do not have to think just like me. Most of these are available, so if you want to check them out, right, if you're looking for a really good budget knife, maybe you're new to the knife world, please check out my description. It definitely helps out when you use my links, but it's entirely up to you. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. These are in no particular order. Starting off here with number 10, a knife that few people will argue over whether or not it's a great deal. The QSP Parrot coming in at $26.50 sporting D2 steel, G10 scales, and steel liners. A lot of people are not going to have to go past this point in the video. This is such an amazing knife. I'm honestly shocked that they can still get it that low. That is an incredible value. Normally when I hear about knives that are under 30, I'm like, it's probably garbage. Every now and then some light shines through and the light is shining through in the form of this QSP Parrot. It's not just the materials, it's the build quality. This thing has nothing extra special going on for it. It's just built well. It's easy to carry. It's, you know, functional. It's easy to manipulate, etc wonderful knife. Moving on here to number nine, uh, it's going to be the Petrified Fish Beluga in 14C28N coming in at about 50 bucks. This has some really classic knife lines, but it's just made a little bit fatter. And for some reason, it just makes it a little bit more appealing. The cutting geometry in particular on this thing is, oh man, super slicey. Uh, I like the, the little tiny details. You know, you can get some like really, you know, kind of basic ones. You can get some ones that look a little bit crazier and obviously the price might be a little bit different. There's also a larger one. This knife caught the attention of a lot of people because it just had really cool lines, had a wider blade, had a nice pocket clip, uh, and just good, just kind of extra, right? I mean, more than what we expect from like, you know, the Ontario Rat 1 and Rat 2. So it is, it's great. I mean, honestly, I really, really enjoyed this. And for $50, I mean, who can argue? Uh, moving on here to number eight, and uh, yeah, we have to have a side opening automatic on this list, and that crown is still worn by the legendary Boker Kalashnikov. Now in D2 steel for 55 bucks. These things are incredible, and they are just stupid durable. These are aluminum. It's not going to have that nice Type 3 hard coat anodizing on it, but it is aluminum, so you get that all metal feel, and then you get D2 steel. These come in a massive range of different blade shapes, different colors, and things like that. Honestly, if you're going to look for a side opening auto in the budget knife world, look no further than the Boker Kalashnikov. It is still king, absolutely. Speaking of automatic knives, no ultimate budget knife top 10 list would be complete without the truly legendary and absolutely the best <laughs> OTF in the budget knife world, uh, the Lightning OTF. Now, the blade steel on this guy is absolutely nothing special. I think it's 440C. It's also aluminum and it's just painted. You get a bunch of different options, including a dagger. I mean, it's one of the, I mean, here's the thing. We can say, oh, well, 14 or, or 440C or whatever the composition is, it's not that great, right? If you get the dagger blade, you get double the edge retention, which absolutely, I mean, I know people like that. So you're kind of like, <laughs> That's kind of like like a technicality there, right? But it's true. You get, I mean, you get another edge, right? Um, so, you know, depending on how you look at it, it can put it into the same type of performance tiers as, as uh, some of these other knives, right? The best thing about this is that it is dual action out the front so you can fire it out and then pull it back in. To a lot of people, these look scary, but they're really utilitarian and super convenient as long as they continue to work correctly. And the Lightning OTF, at least the ones that are built in Taiwan, are really durable and really dependable. Oh my gosh, I mean, if you really want an OTF and you want a good, dependable, budget OTF, and you want to be able to choose the color 
and the blade shape and blah, blah, blah. Go with these because guess what? They regularly go for between $25 and $35. Sometimes you can get them for $20. I'm not kidding. I'll link them down below. It's still absolutely deserving of a spot on this list. Uh, moving on here to number six, and that's gonna be the Civivi Cogent, of course. Coming in at $69 giggity and 14C28 and steel. The button lock craze is here, people, and it is real. And it's not just a phase. I think button locks are awesome. They are super convenient and safe to manipulate, dependable, and I've not had an issue with the locks at all. I mean, uh, you know, for regular day-to-day -day use, this is gonna be fantastic. Nice full-size knife, gives you that real tactical vibe. Good blade shape, again, 14C28N, which is a composition I don't have a problem with all the way up to about 80 bucks, truthfully. Um, I like the look. Uh, I, I, I like that it's got the flipper tab on it. It just works. The Civivi Cogent is really good. It's definitely on the more expensive side as far as this list goes, but in my opinion, it's worth it, and I think you're going to hear a lot of agreement there. Um, moving on, number five. If we were going to put a, you know, give an award to dollar for dollar, the most impressive knife on this list as far as execution, it would definitely go to the Maiguron Velona. Uh, wow, this thing is ridiculously impressive. I think it has a titanium pocket clip. It might have a titanium pivot collar. The liners look great. The G10 scale looks great. The overall presentation of the knife is wonderful and it is imposing. I think it's nine inches overall. Um, these used to have some weird like evolution of D2 steel on them and you can maybe still find those out there. But as far as I can tell now, they have swapped that out with 14C28N steel, which I think is probably better. You're getting a stain. Like the other one had superior edge retention, right? But it also, as if I remember correctly, was not stainless, and it was probably a nightmare to sharpen, especially you know for for newer people. 14C28N is a much friendlier steel, and it makes more sense. This knife looks like it could easily come in at 80 or 90 dollars, but it actually comes in at. $52. If you want a bigger knife, you want a real straightforward, it's almost like business tactical. The Miguron Valona is still ridiculously impressive and the quality on this thing is absolutely mind-blowing. Moving on here to number four. This is another obvious one. That's going to be the QSP Penguin. Slightly more expensive than the Parrot coming in at $32. Um, this is the most popular QSP knife, and it's also one of the most popular budget knives of all time. I think it's basically evergreen status at this point. Like it's, it's almost like the PM2 of the budget knife world. D2 steel, some of the smoothest action, impossibly smooth. It does run on a combination of phosphor bronze and nylon, which is kind of how they're achieving that smoothness. But again, QSP's wonderful execution. The finish on this thing looks great. The uh, overall, just the overall aesthetic of it. This blade shape is really good in particular for EDC. Yeah. Doing draw cuts in general is really, really good. It's beautifully simple to deploy with the thumb studs. The pocket clip is essentially perfection, right? Nice milling for weight reduction. It's just an insanely good knife. It's not something that's indestructible. Nothing on this list is indestructible, but it's really, it's almost at that price, right? This and the Parrot are almost throwaway knives. Extremely, extremely recommendable. Moving on here to number three, and that's going to be the uh, Civivi Elementum. Uh, these come in D2 steel, and they're about 50 bucks. Uh, it's just kind of like if you took every single person on the planet and you took their preference, right, for, um, you know, an EDC knife, and you just sort of mashed it all together and just rounded it out, and you kept smoothing out edges and kept smoothing out average, and you made it the most every man EDC on the planet, it would be this, uh, the Elementum. It is insanely popular because it just works. It's got good cutting geometry. It's got nice action. You have probably the largest, uh, you know, variation outside of maybe, maybe the Kalashnikov and the Lightning, you have more options, but the Elementum, you have an a ridiculous number of options with this thing. Nothing, absolutely nothing special about the aesthetics. Uh, it really is probably the most boring knife on this list, but it's popular for a reason. It, it works and the value is reasonable. I mean, it speaks to a wide variety of people and I gotta admit, it does work extremely well as a day-to-day -day user. So definitely deserving 
of a spot on this list. Moving on here to number two. This is actually a knife that I have here with me. Uh, that's going to be the Sencut Saxi or Saxi, or I'm not really sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And frankly, I don't care. But feel free to correct me down in the comments section anyway. Uh, this is a straightforward, just no nonsense button lock knife. Um, the industry standard, it seems like, or the industry minimum for pricing on a budget button lock knife seems to be about $60. This guy's coming in at $46, so $14 under that mark, at least estimated by me. Um, 9CR 18 MOV steel. Uh, we have a flipper tab. We have uh, the thumb studs. And of course, you can just operate it with the button lock itself. This is just, I mean, it was inevitable that this thing was going to come into existence. It's just sort of like every, Sencut is, if you're like, that looks like a copy of a Civivi. Sencut is part of the same company as Civivi and we, right? So yeah, they have a lot of designs that look like this. This is kind of like a baby, you know, it's like a button lock praxis and conspirator mixed together. Like that's kind of what it makes me think of. Um, but everything is in exactly the right place. The only thing that bothers me is the pocket clip, but that's like every Civivi knife. Um, this is insanely good. Not, like I said, 9CR 18 MOV steel, which is a really good steel for this price point. Um, somebody looking to try out a button lock for the first time and decide whether or not it's for them, this is the way to go. You have a few different options. You don't have to get this pond scum green if you don't want to. Um, but the cutting geometry and just how simple and easy this thing is to manipulate with it being so inexpensive just makes it that much easier to reach for. This is excellent. All right. Moving on here to number one, and I know I said that they weren't in order, but truthfully, I think this is the greatest budget knife of all time. And that's gonna be um, the Civivi Chevalier. This guy has everything that the Saxi has, except it's 14C 28 inch steel, which again is kind of like the go-to steel for the budget territory. Um, it has a sheep's foot blade with a little bit of belly, making it ideal for draw cuts and for slicing. It also has a fuller, which allows it to be reverse flicked um, or forward flicked if you really want to, but nothing is in the cutting path. You have a flipper tab, it's nice to have nothing in the cutting path. You can absolutely make full use of the blade, which by the way, um, I know we're not measuring every single knife out here, but this guy's got three and a half inches of blade and about 3.4 inches of cutting edge, making it really, really incredible for just day-to-day -day use. It also has a wonderful tumbled finish on it, which is going to show very little wear over time. You can choose between wood scales, G10 scales, micarta scales, you get a whole bunch of different stuff. Comes in at $69, which I think is a completely fair price. Again, it's, pr it's, it's higher than a lot of the other things on this list, but this knife does a lot of stuff better. This is probably, you know, it's got the button lock and the flipper, making it one of the easiest knives to open and close, right? But it also has that little fuller there, so you got a little bit of fidget factor in there. It's got incredibly smooth action, wonderful materials, right? Insane balance, too. The thing, because of the skinnier profile, when it folds up, it really feels compact without feeling like a tiny, delicate knife. So you still get a lot in the hand, but it just isn't this big, wide, super tall or bulky thing. It's insanely easy to carry in dress pants, but it's also right at home in work pants, right? I just think Civivi knocked it out of the park with this thing. There's very little that I would change. In fact, the only thing that I would change, seriously, about this entire knife is the bill on the clip. That is the only thing. Everything else is perfect. This is truly wonderful. Guys, that's going to be pretty much it. But rest assured, at some point, I will do a top 50 greatest of all time, much like I did for the entirety of the knife world. You can check out my top 50 greatest knives in general of all time, not limited to the budget category, but I will definitely do a budget themed version of that once I work up the <laughs> courage and the energy to do it. Like I said, all of these knives should be available right now, so you can check out the links for them right down in the description. That's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.